Good morning, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Sarasota. Whether you're a member, a regular attendee, or you've just found us, we want you to know that we're here to support you in finding a personal relationship with a God of your understanding and in discovering what you already know. My name is Jim Grove, a licensed spiritual practitioner here at the Center, and I greet you with Namaste. Namaste is Sanskrit and means the divinity in me recognizes and honors the divinity in you. I'd also like to convey special wishes for a happy Mother's Day. Although my mother made her transition over 14 years ago, I honor her for all the selfless love, support, and encouragement she provided to me throughout my life that has made me the person I am today. And even if this was not your experience, I invite you to know that there is a loving presence, whether you call it God, the infinite, life, the universe, or any other name, that does love you and selflessly gives of itself to you for your highest and best. Each Sunday, we begin by affirming our vision and mission statements. The words can be seen on your screen. Please feel free to read aloud with me. First, our vision empowering spiritual growth as a loving, inclusive, worldwide community. And now our mission. We teach science of mind principles and other life-affirming spiritual truths. We explore, we learn, we grow, we connect, honoring all paths to God. We offer in-person and online weekly services, classes, workshops, affirmative prayer support, and other spiritual tools. We create opportunities for joyful social connection, community outreach, and service. And we celebrate the awakening of our innate spiritual magnificence. Now, as we prepare for our time of prayer and meditation, I invite you to relax, close your eyes, take a deep cleansing breath, and go within as Bob Teasdale sets the tone for us with a song entitled, how could anyone ever tell you? How could anyone ever tell you You were anything less than beautiful how could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul. How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul? How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul? How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul? How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice 
that your loving is a miracle how deeply you're connected to my soul how deeply you're connected to my soul I now sink deeply into the all-encompassing love of the one divine presence, which I call God. I allow myself to feel the self-givingness of this presence as if enfolded in the arms of a loving mother, supporting, encouraging, and caring for her beloved child. The love of this one is beyond measure and human comprehension. Yet it is always present and available at each and every moment just by my recognition and acknowledgement of it. I allow this love to wash over me now, cleansing my mind of self-doubt, worry, and fear. It always knows exactly what to do in any circumstance I find myself experiencing, no matter how uncomfortable or frightening. I can trust in divine guidance as it is revealed to me. Just as a mother desires only the best for her child, I know this divine loving presence desires only my highest good. It compels me to act in accordance with spiritual principles that assure divine right action in all I do. This is the absolute truth. It is my truth and the truth of everyone now listening to my voice. I rest in firm assurance that the highest and best is now transpiring in my life and the life of all others, because it is God's nature to always say yes. I accept this truth with great gratitude and I surrender to the love of the divine as it produces the manifestation of my word declared and released now into the law of mind. And so it is. It's my pleasure to welcome our spiritual leader, Reverend Karen Wolfson back this morning. Her message is entitled, The Infinite Mom Embrace. But before we hear from Reverend Karen, Bob is back to sing A Mother's Love by Gina Hill. Welcome, Bob. She gave me life, showed me what was right. Taught me not to fight the battles that weren't worth a fight. Right from the start, she held me close. And as time went on, she was strong enough to let me go. There's nothing you can do that will change her love for you. Down. Her love will pull you through There's nothing you can say That will take her love away Through the heartache and the pain It was her love that still remained Her love is gonna shine through everything There's nothing in the world like a mother's love She filled every need Made my life complete Time and time again She was with me till the end you believe your dreams, however hard they seem. When you've almost given up, she was there to lift you up. There's nothing you can do 
life will change her love for you when the world comes crashing down her love will pull you through and there's nothing you can say that will take her love away through the heartache and the pain it was a love that still remained her love is gonna shine through She would do it all again For the chance to help you win She was the one who gave it all She was the one through every form There's nothing you can do will change her love for you when the world comes crashing down her love will pull you through and there's nothing you can say that will take her love away through the heartache and the pain it was a love that still remained her love is gonna shine through a mother's love there's nothing in the world like a mother's love Oh, thank you, Bob, for that beautiful Mother's Day song. And, I mean, it's not a Mother's Day song, but it certainly fits for Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all of you. You know, in honor of this, this day, my message for you is titled, The Infinite Mom Embrace. The Infinite Mom Embrace. You know, many of you may be recalling your mom's loving hugs, I mean, there was never a hug that compared with my mom's hugs, her embrace. But I know that may not be true for some of you, for some of us. Um, and sadly for many, the relationship with mom was painful and even in many cases non-existent. That song we heard Bob sing, There's nothing in the world like a mother's love. When the world comes crashing down, her love will pull you through. When you'd almost given up, she was there to lift you up. Her love is going to shine through everything. Well, these words can evoke a lot of emotions depending on what your experience of your mom is or was. And I also want to acknowledge that for for those of you whose mothers have passed on, this day may be, may be especially tender for you. And that's why I'm taking this whole idea to an expanded level, where that incredible experience of maternal love is available to every one of us. So the title of my message for you today is The Infinite Mom Embrace. The Infinite Mom Embrace. I think, I think you catch where I'm going with this. It's it's about the infinite, unconditional, lavish love and embrace of the universe, of life, of spirit, the one, God by any name. And it is available to every single one of us. Ernest Holmes, the architect of our teaching, expressed this so beautifully. He said, at the center of my being is peace, the peace that is felt in the coolness of evening when the first star shines in the soft light of the sky. It broods over the earth quietly, tenderly, as a mother watches over her sleeping babe. Hmm. Now, before I continue, I want to pause and give a big shout out, celebrating the April graduates of the 10-week class Exploring the Roots of Science of Mind. The students are, the graduates are, Samantha Brooks, Susan Davis, Harvey Keltzis, Ann Moore, Sean Scanlon, and Sarah Workman. 
And to you students, you graduates, I want to say that devoting your time and attention and dedication to this study for the past 10 weeks demonstrates your genuine commitment to your spiritual growth and deepening. And I want you to know the impact of your collective high spiritual consciousness is a tremendous gift to our Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota. Know that. You are a vibrant part of the heartbeat of our spiritual community simply by having stepped up to the powerful opportunity of more deeply exploring the foundational principles of our spiritual teaching. And, of course, kudos to your incredible teacher, Kathleen Frankert. Kathleen's fervent dedication to her own spiritual growth and her role as spiritual practitioner and teacher is so magnificent. She walks her talk, and she inspires me time and time again. I know that she devoted 200% of her loving care and wisdom to each of you in your class experience. So my heartfelt congratulations to all of you. And now, let's check in with each other. I am so happy knowing you're out there, and I always wonder how are you doing. Let's stay in touch as 2022 continues to unfold. And by the way, an upcoming way for us to be in touch in person is our, April, our May 22nd brunch at the Sarasota Yacht Club. Details will be uh, shared with you at the end of the broadcast, or you can go to our website and check out our newsletters there. But I hope to see you there because it's going to be wonderful to see one another in person again and just catch up. And know that I continue to affirm for you a year of vibrant wonder. And to your team of financial contributors, I never take you for granted. You too are a wonder. You're absolutely an essential part of all that makes it possible for us to share our message, our caring, and our connection in the way that we're doing. So thank you. So in recognition of Mother's Day, let's consider the infinite mom embrace consider this as written by dorothy canfield fisher mother is a verb it's something you do not just who you are i love that mother is a verb a way of being a loving nurturing energy you know it's not limited to our biological mothers or to the mothers who raised us so Happy Mother's Day to all of you moms and more. Let's hear it for the non-mothers too. This is something that author Irma uh, Bombeck wrote a number of years ago and, and it still applies. Here's what she said. There aren't any greeting cards or songs sung for the, the non-mothers. There aren't any special days set aside for them, but they exist. They are people who experience so much of the joy, the caring, and the pain of motherhood. They just aren't there at the delivery. Some of these non-mothers are disguised as teachers who spend more time with the children, or sometimes more than the mothers can or do. And they inspire ambition, hope, and expertise, a sense of, a sense of self in each child. Other non-mothers are older brothers and sisters of a child who share their bedroom, pizza, and their lives. They take them to the movies on Saturday and they hold them if they are feeling rejected by a parent and there's no one else to cling to. And there's the non-mother dad who prepares meals, cleans up afterward, goes to recitals or school plays, making sure there's always a parental presence for his children. He provides support sharing, and a sense of security. Now, some non-mothers are called grandparents, and whether their time with the child is occasional, part-time, or full-time, they give to that child the added dimension of another time and an appreciation for the values and the things that endure. After all, aren't all of these things what, what a mother's all about? So wise, Irma, thank you. Especially on Mother's Day, I miss my mom, who has been gone for a number of years now. I miss her even more than ever. I guess it doesn't matter what age you are. You miss your mother. 
I miss her hugs, her unconditional love, her reassurance, her momness, <laughs> her way of being. You know what I mean? Like I said, at any age. And then I remember that immense mother love is always present for us. It's not confined to a person. It's that of the creator of God by any name. It's, it's that love that is infinite. The song that Bob sang describing a mother's love is really describing the creative, nurturing love of the infinite. So I took a little bit of liberty with the words, and uh, I'm sharing them with you from that perspective. They would say, there's nothing in the world like God's love. There's nothing you can do that will change God's love for you. And when the world comes crashing down, God's love will pull you through. Through the heartache and the pain, God's love shines through everything. God is with you to the end. Mm. And remember, this universal mother love can be drawn upon by anyone, anywhere, anytime. It is there for us, all around us. Innate in all of creation is an abundance of love and nurturing and supportive mother energy. The best example, actually, that we see is in nature. Khalil Gibran said it this way, Everything in nature speaks of mother, the prototype of all existence, full of beauty and love. Think about it. We refer to nature as mother nature. Now I shared with this you the I shared this next piece with you during the pandemic and I want to share it with you again because it certainly still applies. It's something written by Reverend Susan Sparks and she is the senior minister of a large church in Manhattan. And here's what she wrote. During this COVID-19 crisis, I'm drawing inspiration from an unexpected source. It isn't quiet meditation or connecting with loved ones on Zoom or even large quantities of my favorite comfort snacks, although all of those things have their place. <laughs> nope. She says, my greatest sense of calm is found every day at Dollywood. Oh, uh, no, I'm not talking about the roller coaster or water park. Dollywood has the largest exhibit of non-releasable bald eagles in, eagles in the country. And better yet, in that sanctuary, that eagle sanctuary, tucked inside an eagle's nest, is a live webcam. And every day, she says, while I work, I keep the webcam broadcast playing in the background. And today as I write, I'm watching the mother eagle named Glenda by the sanctuary. Glenda is using her wings to shelter a tiny, fuzzy, grayish fluff ball that looks like an earmuff with claws. The fluff ball, whom I have affectionately named Sam, has had his breakfast, has pooped, and is taking a nap. <laughs> Glenda is snuggling her sleeping Sam. And my blood pressure is at an all-time low. Apparently, I'm not alone. All across the country, she says, and the world, people are tuning in, not just to eagle webcams, but to all types of live nature videos. Glenda's and Sam's day is simple. Glenda's duty is to keep Sam safe and warm and fed. And I look at the video, and at this moment, Sam is peeking out from under Glenda's wing. All you can see is his head. The rest of his body is nestled under hers, taking refuge, toasty and protected. Truly, that tiny eaglet has what every one of us yearns for, longs for, aches for, to be safely surrounded by love, life, and belonging. Hmm. I think I'm going to go check out Dollywood again. I did last year. I think I'll do it again. I loved it. I invite you to do that too. There's a scripture passage, Psalm 91, that promises us this. And, and for today, I'm changing the gender from he to she. And it says, She shall cover thee with her feathers, and under her wings shalt thou trust. That spiritual promise assures us that as the storm and the chaos of life rage around us, we can find peace and rest as we trust. And there's another scripture passage in Isaiah, the Bible, that says, As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. 
Now, some of you may have had a painful childhood, and Mother's Day does not evoke warm, fuzzy feelings, anything but. And yet, I don't believe that the Creator intended that any one of us be deprived of the nurturing care and support of Mother Love. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote a great essay titled Compensation. And in it, he said, a certain compensation balances every defect. What he's saying is that for everything, uh, everything you have missed, there is something or someone to compensate. But sometimes we're oblivious because we're attached to, well, how it should look. But as I reflect on that, I realize I've been blessed to have had a wonderful biological mom. But through my life, I also have been blessed to have many other mothers who have provided me with mothering love, understanding, guidance, and support. So let's celebrate and give thanks for all of the beautiful individuals who are avenues for God's love being there for us. The early New Thought teacher, H. Emily Cady, put it this way. The love between individuals is a bit of God showing forth through visible form. All the love in the universe is God's. A mother's love so infinitely tender and unfailing is God's love manifested in greater degree by the mother. So I'm here to remind you the presence of God's mother love is holding you close. So take that with you this week and know that with every breath, just like that tiny baby eagle tucked under its mother's protective wing, God's mother love is holding you close. And to send us into our week with that beautiful truth, Bob is going to sing his original song that he wrote and dedicated to his own mother. And as you listen... Take the words to heart as your own, in gratitude for your mom, and for all who have and still do fill that role in your life. And most of all, for God's endless, lavish love, nurturing, and care. Happy Mother's Day. When it thundered You were my shelter from the storm And when the cold winds howled You always kept me safe and warm When I made mistakes You were the first to understand When I needed help You always lent a helping hand I'm so grateful to you for everything you've done. You're my mother, my one and only one. To show you my gratitude, what can I give you in return? The moon and stars are not enough. For your wisdom that I've learned Guess the best way I can show you Just what you mean to me Is to use all that you gave me To be the best that I can be The simple words I love you Seem to understate my case The love and gratitude I feel each time I see your face I'm at a loss for words So I hope you'll understand You're my mother The only one who can You 
raised me up to be a kind and gentle man. You're the reason I'm the sentimental fool I am. Not in a million years could there ever be another. Just take all the girls and all the world. There's no one like my mother. The tender warmth of your embrace. I always will remember the many ways you loved me. I can't begin to number. If I could make a list, well I don't know where I'd start. But every single act of love is written in my heart. You're my mother. You are my very heart and soul. You're my mother. You're what I made up. Truth be told, and I'm so grateful to you for everything you've done. You're my. Thank you, Reverend Karen, for your inspirational message, and Bob for that beautiful song anchoring Reverend Karen's message. Now, as we move into our time of offering, I want you to know that we're so grateful for your generous financial support of this center that allows us to support you in so many ways. There are three easy ways to share your offering. On your screen, you'll see our website, which is www.cslsarasota.com, where you can choose a couple of options. You can select the Donate button, which allows you to contribute via PayPal or by credit card. Or you can mail a check to our address. You can also set up automatic contributions through your own online banking. And now I invite you to place your hand over your heart as you reflect on your gift, blessing it as you share it, and know this with me. My gift goes forth to heal, to bless, and to prosper, and the divine flow returns it to me, multiplied abundantly. Now, please join me in our offering affirmation on your screen. I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. Thank you so much. If you'd like prayer support, I'd like to draw your attention to the green prayer request button. We invite you to use this feature to send us your request. Our five licensed spiritual practitioners, Kathleen Franker, Ron Frost, Nicole Leeds, Sean Scanlon, and me are available to know and affirm spiritual truth with and for you in whatever challenge you may be experiencing. We're also available for one-hour spiritual coaching sessions by appointment. For more information, check our website under the staff link at the left side of the screen and then select Practitioners. Here on our website, you can also sign up to receive our weekly email newsletter. Please also check our Facebook page for posts about upcoming events. I have a couple of announcements for you this morning. First, if you haven't already done so, there's still time to RSVP for our upcoming Brunch on the Bay at the Sarasota Yacht Club on Sunday, May 22nd at 11.30 a.m. This is a great opportunity to join together in person for some socializing and fabulous food, all with a sweeping view of Sarasota Bay. Please RSVP by May 16th to the email address shown on your screen. This information is also available in our weekly email newsletter and on our website, cslsarasota.com. Next, our Spiritual Living Circle meets via Zoom every Wednesday evening for one hour from 7 to 8 p.m. to discuss an article from the current month's Science of Mind magazine. This week, we'll be discussing the article by Swati Singh in the May issue entitled, The Gift of Being a Highly Sensitive Person. 
This is a wonderful no cost opportunity for spiritual development and social connection with other like-minded individuals. If you'd like to participate, please email me at the address shown on your screen and I'll send you the Zoom link, article and discussion guide. Now, as we conclude this sacred time together, let us move forward into the week ahead, affirming that we do so in health, safety, and perfect peace. I invite you to listen or join in singing our closing song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Thank you for being with us and have a great week, everyone. Take, let this be my solace. 